Have you, absolutely. Have you been able to walk out there at all? I haven't office. yet. I haven't yet. There's this huge poster with your face on. I have seen that. I've come through the end and I went, whoa. That was, uh, that was pretty surreal. Did you like that? Did you get a picture I, of yourself with that big poster? I took a picture of me with a picture of me. Yeah. Which is uh, thought that was pretty cool. a bit of an inceptionized <laughs> thing, but uh, it yeah. was very cool. It was I cool because they came in and they asked, like, what are you here for? Because I'm only doing this. Yeah. And me, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, no, that one. Right yeah. there. Yeah. So what? Go ahead. So what drew you to this project? Uh, I think um, a lot of things that drew me to the project, but I think it started by um, I think Adam's writing. I think even just in its basic form, he's a very talented writer in itself, and you can read these scripts and, and things just sort of flow from the characters, mouths, from the descriptions to everything. I think is a really, really cool way of doing it, and as well is this I love the character of Holden I think his as, as I've touched on before is sort of his his adolescence and his journey that he takes from sort of boy to man not only in each episode but sort of as an overall arc and even just reading the first one and knowing sort of the journey that he was going to take I was very interested in being able to portray that and put that on the screen Why do you think that like fans should watch this show the sci-fi supernatural fans what sets a show apart from other ones yeah, I think um, our sh what our show does is we try to take a, a boy with abilities and put him in a small town in sort of modern day times and sort of see what happens. And so he is, he is really, the main premise of what he wants to find is really just find out who he is. So he is going through all of the things, even though he's in a 25-year-old body that a 13-year-old would do in, his, in all their teenage years is growing up so he's taking all these experiences going for the first time and on top of that we have the the superhuman ability so I think it's kind of cool to see this character grow up and then sort of discover who he is what these abilities are and how he wants to use them is as a child one really so okay you know the like, she rise on your arm don't trust it no trust no one yeah. like so I don't trust anybody watching this pilot <laughs> So who can we trust? Like, is there anybody we can trust? Is there anybody that we need to come invested in besides your character? Uh, I think there are a lot of guards and there's a lot of shields that are thrown up by these people. And it's it's interesting because you kind of, as you mentioned, the pilot, you go into it blind with Holden. Holden, you see exactly up to his sort of point in his childhood. He blacks out and he wakes up and he's blind to everyone. And he, he knows, obviously, who his family is, but they're different. They've changed. His friends have changed. Everyone who he interacts with is either someone new or someone that he knew before but doesn't look the same or act the same and has become a different person. So I'd say there really is no one he can 100% trust, but he can hope to trust his family, hopefully his friends, and hopefully the people that he meets won't put on too much of a mask and lead him into too much danger, which some of them may. I don't trust the brother. You embody the naivety of that kid pretty well. I mean, it's amazing uh, Thank you. to see you, uh, especially like when you first drive first time, and you yeah. see you the first time. So can you talk a little bit about the preparation for kind of playing a teenager, or like 11 uh, teenager, so to say? So did you have to specifically did you prepare? How, how, how was that? Absolutely. Um, I uh, derived, I mean, a lot of it was a... It was a very fun collaborative process with you know, our directors and our writers and stuff to keep him, as you said, a very innocent, sort of on-looking character. And we tried to take him back to, we had this ongoing term throughout all the episodes of wonderment, as we would say. And it's sort of that when a baby opens his eyes and he sees everything from it, you know, someone sneezing to a rattle to, you know, food for the first time, there's that sense of, what is this? What do I do with this? And, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. It's, it's even the bad things are somewhat that's amazing, a loud noise. It might be scary, but it's new. So we really tried to take something back to experience it for the first time. And for me, that was a big process. And as well as some of the things that you would experience, I can relate to. And my growing up as a young man, from my teenage years moving on, I remember my first time talking to a girl, my first time having all of these sort of teenage experiences that uh, were really fun to sort of reenact. But uh, also the other side which I really enjoyed, I think I spoke to you last night, <laughs> Uh, I saw some dark shit in the too, right? Yeah. That uh, scene where uh, we hit the ground, uh, you know, the camera was a beautiful but the way that he also gave love. It's like pretty dark. And uh, as I, was, I was like, look at this. Now he looks very different. Yeah. <laughs> should play a bit. So, can you talk a little bit about uh, the opposite uh, part of uh, playing that and the act, doing some action work? I mean, uh, because action is pretty big on TV, you'll see the quality of action on TV. Like, so, how is that playing the dark part of the action? 
yeah, the the act I I have love, do love, and will still oh, I love action movies. So for me, being able to do something like this is really a cool dream come true. And doing the stunt work and doing all that fun stuff was really unbelievable. And captured on as we sort of visioned it, a very movie esque cinematography type way, which which we really enjoy how the the pilot is rest of the series has panned out. Um, and I love sort of as you said the dark moments of it because. He isn't necessarily, you know, a good guy that's given these powers and all this stuff. He isn't. He's he's discovering what he is and who he is. So it's he has this choice. You put this sort of innocent boy that doesn't really know really right from wrong most times because he doesn't. He hasn't experienced what right from wrong means into this position of power. And it's very interesting to see exactly when some of these darker emotions and when he lets his sort of anger, frustration come out. And unfortunately, with these powers, what they can do to the surroundings and as well as the people around him. It's very cool. So you go to high school or no? Uh, we, it's interesting. He, uh, we do, we touch on school. We touch on school a bit in, in it. I mean, there's a lot of elements that take place outside school. Some of it touches on education. This takes place uh, right when he sort of comes out of his coma and sort of that is the generation of the show when he wakes up. So I mean, we saw the first episode. Exactly. He's not enrolling the first day. So uh, there is, there is, but there is some school aspects and as well as sort of meeting that young crowd and a lot of school-based aspects that might not be taking place in school, but take place sort of out in that world. So I feel like the pilot leaves you with more questions than answers. But <laughs> like, what's the real question that we should be asking? Like, what? I think the I mean, for me, when I when I read it is, <laughs> I mean, saying that what is what is happening? I mean, who who is who is this, and what is he going to really? What is he going to do? I think is is who these characters are, how he's going to interact with them. And you're right, you're left with a lot of questions. And we did that because we are allowing you to learn with Holden. He's taking exactly all of this in so quickly that throughout the rest of the series, you will slowly learn who these characters are, what they mean to him, and eventually he will sort of be able to navigate through the world with more of an understanding as the audience will, I'd say. So the best way... For one more question. No, I was just going to say, the best way is you have to tune in to find out. It's cliche. I mean, I'm waiting to find out if the bad guys are with the government and you can meet the Humpia family. It's yeah. Like, I got to wait until, what, February now? As I was going to say, on. January. But So it's, it's a month earlier than you thought. But uh, right. there, are, uh, there are a lot of big questions, and I think that's the cool part of what we do is we... Um, there's not a lot of sort of expository beginnings. There's really no, you know, there's no text, there's no type. There's, you, you're left with a lot of unanswered questions that you will sort of, as I would say, without trying to give away anything, or I won't, but uh, you'll figure out with him. You'll figure out with Holden, and you really will get them from points of views of characters, which is interesting as well, is you don't get a sort of an out-of-world sort of view on who people are. You get points of views as information is being told to him, which may be skewered from the character that tells him himself. So it's a fun way of sort of putting together this world and seeing exactly who's bad, who they work for, and really, are they bad in the first place. Right. Good luck. Congratulations. Thank That's you very much. Great. That means a lot to me. Thank you.